This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by The Marketing Masters. The Marketing Masters is a boutique marketing agency offering website development and digital marketing services to small and medium businesses across America. For more information on how they can help you grow your business online, please visit themarketingmasters.com. Welcome to another edition of the Impact Podcast. I'm John Shigarian. I'm so honored and excited to have today my friend Mark Sadovnik. He's with us as a guest on Impact. Welcome to Impact, Mark. I'm super delighted to be here. Thanks for having me, John. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. We've known each other through common friends for years. We've been to conferences together. I'm a huge fan of your work at the Fifth Element Group. And uh, I just would love for you to share today a little bit about uh, your background first. Get, I want our listeners to get to know you, Mark, about your journey leading up to the Fifth Element Group and how you even got to where you are today. How much time we got, John? We got as much time as you want, Mark. This is all about you. <laughs> oh, all about me. That's a dangerous path to go down. Um, no, um, well, thanks. So, well, you know, originally from Montreal, huge hockey fan and um, – Learned a lot about about sports, and um, you know, uh, I guess if you want to start, you know, one thing, one person that taught me a lot in my life was my my grandfather, who, um, you know, him and my grandmother were from uh, from Kiev, Russia. My mom and and aunt and them mm. came over like in the in the twenties or something, and uh, but the you know things I remember most about him was yeah. like, we'd go for walks as a kid with him, and he would smile at everybody. And it's so all the next one, next one. And, and I would say, we called him Zeta, which was the Jewish term to call him. I said, Zeta, how do you know all these people? Mm. And he said, um, he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you smile at all these people. How do you know them all? I says, I don't know them all. I just noticed that when I smile at them, they smile and look happy. And then I smile mm. and I'm happy. So mm. it's great. <laughs> I'm thinking, That's so great. Okay, cool. And he was super kind and super friendly to, to everybody and, he would share stories about his past in Russia and then after that. But that stuck with me for so long um, about kindness and caring about people. And that was like the first maybe youngest glimpse. And then, um, you know, I went to school and I was involved in community stuff and uh, and I I enjoyed it. I was enjoyed it. It's, it's like that. What do they say around Christmas? It, it's better to give than to get. You feel better type of thing. And uh, so, um, you know, and. Being involved in the community, just there was a light inside of me that uh, it just it just felt good. And then um, I actually wanted to be a sports broadcaster when I was um, when I was younger. They're going to change my name to David to Mark Jansen, actually. And uh, wow. but then then my mom and dad said, "Well, don't you think you should be like an accountant or an attorney or something?" And so I went into accounting. Thanks, mom. I went into accounting. <laughs> I was really good at it, which was the, the bad part because I really didn't like it at all. And um, right. but this all just uh, flowing this maybe a little bit faster. I had a an influencer at Deloitte, a, a partner. He was the only partner that actually recognized that the other partners saw that I was really good at what I did. And they wanted me to work on stuff, which is fine. I appreciated that. But he saw that I really didn't like it. And he actually was caring enough to say, well, you should be talking to clients. He made me the MC of all the events they did. I mean, we'd go up to see clients, we'd talk to clients and everything like that. And and he made an impact on me about the people and the relationships is is, is equally as important, if not more important than, than, than everything else. And uh, so kind of through my career um, at Deloitte, and then I was, I was in Winnipeg, Canada with a, a large real estate company there, and I got offered a job with the pro hockey team there. That was my oh. dream job. Oh, wow. This is a kid from Montreal, played oh. hockey, loves hockey, the whole bit. Um, I got involved. Like, I organized a, a fan club for kids there, and we had 3,000 kids in the club in a week. And so that was great community things. I got to know the team. And so they made me an offer to for a, a senior marketing position at the team. I'm saying, damn, this is awesome, my dream job. <laughs> You but just hit the, the jackpot. Was, you hit the jackpot. Yeah, wow. I almost won the Stanley Cup myself. <laughs> and uh, but um, at the same time, I was in an organization called the JCs, 
which is now called Junior Change JCs, where it's about leadership development and community. And we lost having their World Congress in Winnipeg. We lost to Taipei. We were the two finalists. Right. And we lost. And you and I have talked about this somewhat, where things happen for a reason. Right. And so they offered me to come down and be executive director at this global headquarters nonprofit for leadership development. At the same time, I got offered my dream job with the hockey team. <laughs> oh. And I'm thinking, darn, you know, now what? Every single person told me to take the position with the hockey team, except for the person from the hockey team that offered me that job. What basically. do you mean? Really told you um, to take the other job. He told me to take the other job. And I thought, wow. uh, he's just seeing that if I really want this. Right. But but he wasn't. He actually sat down with me. Oh. And I was pretty awestruck of this guy, big guy. He used to be a, a, a player on the Montreal Canadiens, a tough player, good scoring player and whatnot. And he was heading up the team there. So it was like, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm an adult with a kid inside talking to this guy. And um, I said, Mark, you know, I know you love this. You do a great job. That's why we offered it to you. But you know what? If I really cared about you, there's that word again. Mm -hmm. I remember it. If I really cared about you, I'd be saying you're going to travel the world. You're going to meet leaders. You're going to have an exposure in other countries that are going to be incredible. Hockey's a game. It's a business. It's fun. It's fantastic. But you're not going to get another experience like that. You may get another one in hockey. You're not going to get another experience like that. The only one, including myself, that told me to take the other thing. And I did. I took that. And um, hmm. which, believe it or not, was major for turning down a dream job with a pro hockey yeah. team for me. Anyway. No and, kidding. As a young man. But, yeah, exactly. So the word care kept following me. And uh, I saw a lot of incredible leaders that were great. I saw some sucky ones, too, to use a technical term. And, um, and it was um, an awesome experience of how uh, leaders can make a difference around the world um, in all, all different ways, um, economically, social, and whatnot. And, uh, and so I um, did that for a while, got a lot of relationships, got into the executive search business, which is the core business that I do. And, and long story short, throughout those years, I always had a lot of discussions with leaders of how do we get the very best people? How do we get the A players? Why are people leaving this and that and the other? And, and there was examples like a rider system was a big client. Had a lot of young families there and kids, and they were stressed out at work and a lot. And so I remember talking to them, well, and someone would say, "Well, we just got to figure out how do we how do how do we how do we get more and better people? We got to somehow we got to care more about them." So someone says, "More benefits, more this that." And so we said, "Well, they miss their kids. Why don't we build a daycare center?" So they did. They built hmm. a daycare center, and we were able to talk about that. That the leaders at Ryder really care about their employees. You can be close to your kids and do that. And we started getting better people. Right. And Alamo changed one of their HR directors to a director of well-being. And back then, that was 1990-ish. Oh, uh, people was thought, well, what are you doing? That's, it was an article in the paper saying, give them a job in a treadmill. They should be happy, hmm. basically. And so not, unfortunately, it took guts to actually do that. But to represent them as leaders who cared um, made a difference for them. And they were able to keep people. And that just kept following me through through my career and um and led me you know with my own firm you know we were pretty successful uh, um, regionally nationally and internationally because i had relationships and uh and then even coming to la growing it there and um i, I was recruited to join a, a global firm and it, it was going well and good people but i i found that they were actually uncomfortable with the word care and i think i told you this they were uncomfortable with the word care it was too intimate for business and I joked with him saying, wow, what are you going to do when I start using the word love? You're going to go crazy. <laughs> um, so it was around that point that I met what now are my fifth element uh, group partners. And we we together um, launched Fifth Element about two years ago. I was still with my other firm um, at the same time as, as launching the um, Decade of Women initiative, which was about SDG, Sustainable Development Goal Number 5, and empowering women and whatnot. And uh and who we and, and Fifth Element and um, and I just decided that um, you know we had a few people that worked together. We decided we need to be together. We had complementary different backgrounds. One a, a, a top executive marketing and branding with Coca Cola, Citibank, Ford, and Kellogg's. Another one 
worked with Matt Damon on water.org and in sports and entertainment, another one with foundations and nonprofits, another one well being. Just um just the epitome of of what I wanted to do. And I had trademarked just before that the term leaders who care. And we made a commitment that what we are is fifth element, which is basically named after the fifth industrial revolution, which has pretty well been declared as humanity to oversee the fourth industrial revolution, which is also going on right now about AI and blockchain and whatnot. But we're in charge of it, not the other way around. It's about humans and, um, and caring. And, um, so that led us to, to, you know, great things happening where as partners, you know, the, the core really of, of how we're making an impact and why we make an impact is aligning corporate brands, aligning family offices with social impact, not just because, not in the donation, but getting them a higher return on investment, a higher return on value, a measured brand warmth, how consumers and talent feel about them. And at the same time, allows us to attract them, the best, best, best people who only want to go work for leaders who care, who are making a difference. But it's not sacrificing money for that. And it's not just making a donation. There's this, if you can be for profit and for good, as you well know, because you do have done this for years, you can do both and do better for both. That's well said. And for our listeners who've just joined us, we're honored to have today with us, Mark Sadnovic. He's the partner at the Fifth Element Group to learn, learn more about Mark's great and important and impactful work at the Fifth Element Group. You could go to Fifth and you go with a five. You go use the, the number five, five, T-H, elementgroup.com. Fifth Element Group. I mean, Fifth Element Group. And it's a dot or it's a dot group. Oh, okay. <laughs> fifth Element dot group. For all our listeners out there, you go to Fifth Element dot group. There's no you know what's great there. about that? Oh you my said gosh! It more times than you would have, so it gives us even I, better exposure. I'm gonna, and then I'll say it about five more times, and I might <laughs> get it right by the end of this broadcast. But um, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, Mark. First of all, I don't want. I mean, you're so humble, and you're such a, a, a good human being. You just glanced over your headhunting days, and I don't want our listeners to just think, "Oh, well, Mark was a headhunter." You were recognized by Business Week as one of the most influential 150 headhunters in the entire world. So, you know, I just want you to take a little, just to give us a little nugget. What out of, when you're a headhunting and you're doing this for quite some time as a profession, you become an expert at people. You, you, uh, you know, you become a people expert. And so before we go into all the great stuff that you launched two years ago at Fifth Element, which is tons to go over. Give me, give our listeners a nugget or two. What did you learn about people to become one of the top headhunters in the world that we could all take with us to interrelate with people better than we do today? It's a great, uh, it's a, it's a, it's such an important question. Um, you know, one one of my favorite quotes in the world, and there's a lot, is um, is Maya Angelou, who said, um, "Most people will forget what you said. Most people will forget what you've done, but they will always remember how you made them feel." Oh, I love that quote. That is just the best. Yeah, it That's is. It. It's it's so, so true. it's so deep and yet so simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, right. It, it goes back to my grandfather making people smile, basically, right. um, and. It really, what I, if you're looking to, to do, you know, build long-term trust, long-term relationships, and mm. not just, you know, quick hits, then people have to trust you. People have to really see that you really do care, like for real care, authentically right. care. Um, and I learned my very, very, very search, first search I did was for some kind of tax position and everything. It worked really hard and it was my first one and, and got them, the company made an offer to this guy and he declined. And I was hmm. like, damn, I worked so hard in this and he declined. At that time, we were just doing contingency search. In other words, you get paid if you place a person. Right. So now I don't do that. But, um, and I was thinking, man, that sucks that it did that. How can you turn <laughs> it down? It's like, I mean, I worked so hard and how can you turn it down? And, and he said to me, I just didn't feel it was the right fit. And, and it hit me. It's not about me right. that I did all that work. It was about, is it the right fit for this person? And is right. it the right, and is he the right fit for the, for the people in the company? And, um, 
and some, you know, sometimes you got to, you got to fail or get smacked to, to get what you already know, maybe even. And, um, so I, I do remember that. And, um, and I'm in it for the long-term relationship, um, all the time, because that's the way you don't get burnt out basically is if you're really in it for the right reason to help people, then it's not about making a sale. It's not about, um, all this energy to, to be on. I remember I did a blog once that, um, you don't need to be on all the time. Just mm. be, just be, yeah, um, right. cause being right. on all the time is exhausting. Right. Actually. Right. Um, so, and it's again, back to that caring thing that goes back to my grandfather again, the whole thing about, I think people know if you care people, what I, I'll, and I'll tell you a little thing I I've done over the years is when someone gets an offer, I, I, I'd say, don't answer me now, whatever, go home. You obviously want to talk to your family and whatnot, but I want you to, and I learned this from sports. Hmm. Sports teaches us a lot, right? Yeah. It teaches us so many things. Um, so true. But I had a great teacher that taught me about visualization. He taught me hmm. visualization. He was a coach also in the game. He taught me visualization. If I'm preparing for a test to visualize myself sitting at the desk beforehand. So when I get to sit down and the time starts, I don't waste 10, 15 minutes organizing my stuff. I've already been there and I'm doing it or I've already been in the game before I'm in, in the game. And right. um, I actually tell them to go home. I want them to close their eyes. It works a lot better that way if they're cool with that. Hmm. And um, I want you to think about getting up the next morning, getting dressed, putting on your suit, whatever, going to the car, driving there. Um, you get there, you park in the parking lot, you walk in and you know, say hi, this one, that one, you go sit in your office, you go get some coffee, you're talking to people, you're getting on the phone to talk to what, whoever you're going to talk to, your boss, and you go, then you go home and back home again. Tell me how that was. And the minimum it does is it makes them think more about this is real. I've got to go do this now because we all love to date and have people and being courted and all that. But right. then when you get married, you have laundry and bills and stuff to handle and everything. <laughs> You know, so yeah. it's like the same thing. It's fun. They want me. They're going to pay me this and that. But then you actually got to do the work. Right. So um, in almost 30 years, I've had two that I remember, maybe three that have told me, man, that was that was great. I don't even want this job. I was just caught up in the whole in the whole thing. I'm going to have to turn down and different from my very, very, very first search, first search as a young guy where I was ticked. I was saying, great. If we're going to, now's the time to know, not after. Right. And, um, and the client obviously is super happy because it costs money to have someone accept and then not be happy. So, so really that, that type of thing where the person sees that I really, 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 it's okay if they turn it down. Right. Um, in fact, there's no obligation of the, the leaders of the company to make an offer. There certainly isn't an obligation for the person to take it. That's not the game. The game is to, are we the right fit for each other? Is this going to be fantastic? And uh, I think, um, you know, that's where you, if you come across, because the people I work with now are, are, you know, mostly senior management, executive boards, and they're busy. They're um, they're smart, most of them. <laughs> they're, um, right. um, you know, they're, and, and it's all about trust. You know, you don't really want to waste their time talking about something that's not an opportunity and certainly I'm not going to try to sell them something. Um, it has to be, it has to be what we've called the rate fit culture ad. And what I mean by that is rate fit doesn't mean you're exactly like everybody in the company. It means you bring, you add to the culture, what you bring, what you have, which includes ex diversity of experience, diversity of background, culture, language, whatever you add to that culture. You, you don't want to hire people that are exactly the same as you. It doesn't make any sense at all, even though people have done that for years before. Right. Um, but that's another thing that um, really makes a difference um, is where that they, um, especially a lot of younger people these days, they're, they're looking for that diverse. They're looking for the right opportunity. They're not looking for a recruiter to um, shove them into a job, you know, somewhere. So, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of where I come from. And um, again, I compare a lot to sports where um, people look at pro athletes and they say, man, it must be, it's a blast to be a pro athlete. And it's great. It's, if, I, if I was playing pro hockey, I'd be right. happier than ever. But 
they have crappy days too and they have stuff that goes on and it becomes routine and everything and you get burnt out even if you're doing the thing you love the most you get burnt out unless you unless there's a why there unless your passion is is really there and you've got people around you that complement that and um so that um that's kind of, you know, I was honored when they, when they said that about, about business week, but it, um, again, it's not rocket science. It's about taking care of people. Got it. You know, and again, for our listeners out there, find Mark or his great organization. You can go to fifth element dot group, fifth element dot group with a five in front of it. Fifth five T H element dot group at the fifth element group. You are the chief human element officer. What does that mean to you? No, you could have stopped it. What does that mean? Because it was a, it was a crazy. We were looking at titles, but uh, yeah. it, it was a different title. And um, yeah. you know, sometimes people would think I'm the HR director, right? Um, just because bam, 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 that's they would think. But you know, we have a chief Omni Win officer, we have a chief Impact officer, we got a chief Family Office officer, and so on. And um, the the key to that that title is um, we have a we have a human element practice, which again is the complementary practice for our, our OmniWin consulting practice of aligning brands with, with social impact. And um, the human element practice includes the whole executive search practice. It includes a well-being initiative and includes diversity and inclusion. And um, we wanted to make a point of, again, the fifth element is about humanity. Um, we want to make a point that, um, again, it's not about just placing people the human element is is critical to everything we do as obvious as that may sound um it's critical with technology moving at the fastest pace ever ever um it's very easy to get in a riptide and 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 forget that we're that we're human beings and people that are that i deal with that are looking potentially are open to good opportunities they want to work with with human beings that care they really 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 do they want to work with human beings that have a purpose that have a why because they do also and the other important element is they want to they want to work with people that listen to mm. also what their why is and what what their passion is and not just you know not just be all the same this is what we do you do you do have to be a team but we're also individual human beings and we have to listen to each other, hear what's going on with each other. The best leaders, you know, there was one leader of a major company um, I was with recently and he took me through his whole office and he, he knew everybody's names. This is a big company. He knew everybody's names. He knew if they're, if they were having a baby, he knew what this was going on. That was going on. It was, it was incredible. And how great is that? That's awesome. How, how good does that make you feel? Really you know? good. Oh. And it brings, it reminds me of another story. Um, Way back when, with Deloitte, um, at that time it was called Northern Telecom and Bell Canada, they were clients of ours. And I was a young kid and um, I was like a little, little kid because I would ask questions all the time. You know, the sky is blue. Why? Because it does this. Why? You know, you just keep asking why. And um, <laughs> so the, the CEO happened to be in the office because we were at corporate headquarters and I'm doing some grunt work of adding numbers or God knows what. <laughs> and, um, and, I had gone to the, one of the factories there to do an inventory, um, which was actually was that part was kind of interesting because you get to see real what the business is about. Right. And and he happened to come by and say hi, which I thought was cool. And I said hi, and um, I said I was just at the factory. It was really cool. I was talking to this one and that one. I saw how they were making these phones that no one's even seen yet, and they were. They were making flip phones. This is back in like late seventies, flip phones and and all sorts of things that were going on and. Uh, it was really cool. Then somebody told me how they improved this and that. And he, and he said, well, that's amazing. I haven't even been there myself. And I said, um, I started thinking to myself, I wasn't a genius, but how does he even know what's going on if he hasn't been to, to there? And it, it also reminded me always about how at that time, produ- head of production people weren't even on the executive committee or anything. They were not, they were just considered that they were out there and we'll decide what to do over here but you don't know what's going on. And I told him they're amazing what's going on over there. And when he said he did, he's never been, I was kind of surprised, but so it's funny two or three days or a week later, when I saw him again, he said, and he came over and he said, I went to the factory. I was amazed too. 
there's so many things those people know. <laughs> wow. And he started wow. doing a um, an address that they have communicated to factories and all their employees about the CEO talking about stuff like mm. that. Mm. And I'm thinking, man, you know, it wasn't genius, but actually made an impact there by telling him, <laughs> easily telling him that the, those people know what they're doing. It was so interesting. And to his credit, he went, basically. He could have not gone, right. especially back, back then. Right. But to his credit, he went. And, uh, you know, you see these things through your, through your life that catch you at, this, at a time, right. whatever it is, and they make an impact. So he made an impact on me on that, and I hope it made an impact on, on him. And, um, but it's all about people, right? It's all about people. So leaders with care, leaders who care. Talk about or the original coming together of that partnership and launching that program, Leaders Who Care, and then take us into what you've been doing recently with your video interview project and how that's evolved and developed over, over since your initial launch of the Leaders Who Care uh, initiative. Yeah, and I'd, um, I'd almost, I almost wouldn't call it an initiative. I would call it a way of being or okay. something that we Fair do. Enough. We we work, we work and engage and commit to working with leaders who care. Okay. Um, which gives them basically an extra recognition because really good talent knows that we work with leaders who care about their financial well-being, their physical well-being, and their mental well-being. As Got well it. as they care about the planet, they care about environment, they care about the mm. sustainable development goals. And mm. we don't just say it because – the other half of our core business is aligning their brand with social impact. Mm. So they really have to show that they really do care because Got it. I learned a while back, you know, candidates are smart, especially younger ones now. And, and every era young generation comes up and adds new stuff for sure. But this one's an amazing one. They'll go into interviews and I will guarantee you, they will ask, what are you doing about the environment? Do you care about the oceans? What are you doing for the employees with respect to our well-being? They will ask these questions, which we didn't really ask. Back no, then, back when, and they want know? tangible answers. They don't want just some fluff, right? Oh, man. It's not <laughs> – yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give you an extra week off when you work here 17 years or something, you know? Um, <laughs> I mean, geez. Yeah, that don't um, cut it anymore. <laughs> no, and, um, no, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful because – Life isn't all about money, right. obviously, and it doesn't right. make you happy, but you don't sacrifice um, money to do good. You don't have to do that. It actually has finally come to the point that leaders who care about both making money and having an impact do better in both of those at the same time. And uh, I love it. So that's that's kind of where the whole strength of the leaders who care care thing is. And um you know, some of the work we're doing with some of the amazing leaders. We were in Davos this last January, this yeah, January this year. Yeah, talk about that. Talk about Davos. Like, who you interview there and how did that go? Davos was, was actually great. And it seems, we had, this was the end of January and we're in May. And it seems like it was years ago. Doesn't it? Back then. January yeah. for all of us seems like it was years ago. I exactly. mean, you're so right on that. It's so, so right. much how the world is, has changed. Huh. But um so we went specifically with, with four, four clients, but we also have a um, really amazing community, which I'm proud to say that we were fortunate. Forbes recognized our community as an um, outstanding global um, brain trust network. And some really amazing leaders and influencers and, and, and client leaders and so on that are in it. And, and we went specifically with four that wanted to do something specific there. And then we bring delegates from our community to different events when we were having events and they'll yeah. come back. But um, so, for example, um, uh, um, one of the big clients we were able to set up with, you know, media plays, uh, strategic meetings, sitting on panels, making announcements. Um, another one we set up with, you know, two or three um, um, corporate players there. This was a nonprofit one set up with corporate players that were really interested in what they did about trauma and, and counseling around around the world. And mental health is a is a major, major issue. Um, sure. We were uh, another client of ours is a, um, a company that um, actually has an, an AI um, 
an AI um, technology that actually uh, identifies measures and fixes um, with respect to um, di you know, um, your eyes and how it affects diabetes. And they're going to be expanding that into much more of how it impacts your eyes and your, and your whole body. So technology there. And um, so Davos was basically like a platform. We're going to go back in uh, January next year with um, more of that, more, more clients. Uh, but it's about really putting our clients in a position to achieve what they, they need to achieve. And a lot of it is about um, kind of like, kind of like the search, kind of like what we do about putting the right fit together, you know, people and people or putting the right people of company A together with the right people of company B or the right nonprofit for social impact. And I love it's it. again, what we call is an omni win. You know, I guess we used to say a win win, but it's really like right. an omni win where we may have two, we may have five right. parties involved at the same time. And they all, they all benefit, you know, AI, you know, or, or win, if you will, um, in one way or another. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, I was taught a long time ago, <laughs> someone mentioned this, man, I never forgot. I never understood why in a sports league, the media would say, well, company or, or the team A and team B had a trade. Team B won the trade. Team A lost the trade. Right. I said, well, that can't be very good for anybody if one team keeps losing trades and then one team keeps winning championships if the league isn't of value because other teams are crappy or teams are losing trades then how valuable how valuable is your championship the league has no value so we live on one planet and if the planet sucks then and you're making a ton of money over here but the planet sucks what good is that right. basically we're all on the same planet or in the same league now, that doesn't take away from competition. Competition is great because it makes us all better. But to win a competition in a league that's super valuable is way better than playing tennis with somebody that you win all the time. Who cares about that? Right, right. Um, it, all, it all applies. And um, one of the things I mentioned to you, one of the exciting things we've done recently is we, we um, combined with um, John Krasinski's Some Good News. Yeah, tell tell us about the 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 that story and you had some big wins recently with two with some huge brands. Please share those stories. I, I really want our listeners to hear about those. Yeah, very very cool. We're super honored to be part of it because John just you know blasted this thing and mm -hmm. some good news was exactly what everybody needed during this whole time. And um, amen. And he put out the news and and people started responding because we were craving you know, good news. So mm. people would start bringing some good news about the nurses and frontline workers and drivers and little kids mm. that are creating masks and you name it all around and just mm -hmm. grew and grew and grew. And, and then being that what we did, we start talking to John and his team and he's saying, and you know, he sees that we bring corporate brands, align them to social impact. Well, there's a play here. So restaurant employees were suffering a lot. Guy Fieri had started this restaurant employee relief fund um, John knew him. We talked to some clients, you know, to come in on this and, and it's not about, you know, you hogging the whole show. You're going to get mentioned for what you did, but it's about making a difference and, and, and aligning yourself with social impact. So the executives of PepsiCo were amazing in two days. They were able to put a budget together from Pepsi and the foundation of $3 million to Jeez. surprise John surprised Guy Fieri saying, oh, I understand you got $17 million in your employee fund. Well, our friends at PepsiCo want to bring that to $20 million. Wow. And Guy Fieri was like, no way. I got goosebumps. It's really amazing to see. And then it exploded in social mm. media after that. A half a billion people or more now have seen it. Pepsi That's incredible. is super thrilled. AT&T got better coverage on this, they said, than their Super Bowl ad, basically. What? And oh my God, his daughter, John's daughter does a lot of the drawings and she drew a Pepsi logo as a kid would. Pepsi's right. now putting that on T-shirts and selling it all for charity um, and so on and so forth. And recently, this last week, we um, did the same thing with, with Starbucks, who are spectacularly wonderful. And they um, helped start. This is going to be the show from now on. It's going to be John still be in it in tidbits, but it's going to be people around the world bringing some good news to the show and That's there's awesome. now going to be a some good news 
some good merch for merchandise <laughs> marketplace that's already open now. That's great. Uh, some good new stuff and um, and Starbucks for the, initially for a million is going to match um, the first million that comes in to give to charities that are identified, and it's going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing to to bring good news and uh, and to have social impact and and guess what? It's good for business too. And and we got to have it be good for business because. Um, we need to, people have to make money. People have to have livelihoods, people have whatnot. Right. And more good news can happen. Yeah. So, so here's one of your omni wins. You have John's Ex channel exactly. getting more publicity and more visibility, which is only going to only attract more good news for all of us to share and enjoy and get inspired from. Pepsi wins. Guy Fieri's organization wins. Starbucks wins. I mean, this every, there's wins all over the place here, so that's why it's much more than like you just said, win win. This is an omni win. This is an omni impact, really. Yeah, this is the opposite this of a, a pandemic on that side. This is a good contagion <laughs> thing right here. That's awesome. That is just so amazing. Hey, you know, before we we before we have to split for today, you 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 mentioned your grandfather. Give me one other. Give our listeners one other key influencer in your life besides your your great your, you know your your grandfather, who is obviously a huge, huge figure and impact in your life. Well, this one this one may be maybe a little bit weird. So I'm I'm Jewish and um, and I've always been interested in peace. We're doing stuff for 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 peace right now. We're actually called uh, business for peace. Business leaders who care about peace and how it's good for business and how it's good for people, but one person that influenced me that I um, I've never met but I did see mm. um, was Anwar Sadat, mm. and it just he just inspired me when I heard him speak. Inspired me that he knew he was probably going to be assassinated at some point. Um, it's an amazing story. Egypt was the arch rival to Israel, as we all know, forever, ever, ever, right. ever. Right. 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 <laughs> Funny enough, they still have a peace treaty between each other, and it's others that are our problem. But so he went against everything. I mean, talk about a a big dream, and knowing that he's in danger all the time. And he um, and what really so I, I read a lot of his stuff about what he wanted to do and how he, peace was important and all this stuff. But where it really then hit home was he was the first Egyptian president to be to make a speech in Israel. Literally, and he was in Haifa, and I saw the thousands of Israelis cheering um, an Egyptian president in Israel. Mm. Mm. And so to me, um, it almost shows what's bigger than that, almost. And I'm sure there is something bigger somewhere, or equally sure. big, or it doesn't. It's not a matter sure. of size, but right. um, how big? How like humble? How inspiring? How big a dream? How brave um, and how how loving was he to do something like that um, and um, and see the see how the people of Israel were so um, taken by how much he cared to be there, no matter what the danger was that um, that he was there, and and it just shows time and time again that. Um, Whatever you think is impossible, it's, it's not impossible. <laughs> it's, right. uh, it's, it's super possible, and it doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it's possible. So that's, um, that was um, a big influencer for me, too. You know, we're going to end, but we're going to bring it all back to sports. Um, cool. And I know you and me are both sports junkies, and we love the analogies and sports and life and sports and business. Recently, last weekend – the Michael Jordan documentary ended, The Last mm -hmm. Dance. Yeah. Did you have a chance to watch any of those episodes? Every single one. <laughs> okay. And me too. And more than once. And my favorite, my favorite episode was episode number eight. At the end of episode number eight, Jordan was on, on screen and uh, he was finishing his comments and he got very emotional. Mm -hmm. And he ended with, this quote, and I want to ask you what this quote means to you and to leaders who care. He said, winning has a price and leadership has a price. What does that mean to Mark? 
and to your great work and important work that you're doing at the fifth, fifth element. And what does that, how does that interrelate with the leaders who care, uh, 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 you know, series that you've created? What do you think of that? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Cause you saw, mm-hmm. you saw his determination throughout that whole show, like the right. highest level of determination, right. which is absolutely necessary to achieve what, what he achieved. And, that's that's the price and he was willing to pay the price to get it and i'm going to do a little a mini circle mini out of the circle back in the circle kobe always said something to kobe bryant that i knew before he passed away but when he passed away they they said it over and he said most people are looking for the dream the dream's over there and you gotta have the dream you gotta have the dream what they're not realizing is this is the dream right this second yeah and and that was it's almost like enjoy the journey, if you will, right. but in a different right. way. This is the dream, and I, right. and I think, um, you know, Michael, just like all of us, isn't perfect, but right. he, um, he committed to what he had to, the hard work he had to do above and beyond to be at that level, and almost, almost a lot of times take the team on his on his shoulders. But he also committed to making Pippen and Rodman and them better. He committed to making um, Steve Kerr better and how much right. did he contribute to Steve Kerr's life because of that. Um, and and he, and he didn't judge Rodman. He'd be pissed at him if he wasn't at practice. Right. But he didn't judge him. He said, he said You're, we need you. We need you here. And he brought him in. And I don't know if you remember the story. He said when Rodman once, after he did something stupid, came to his room and asked for a beer. And yeah. he gave him the beer. He said Rodman never said he was sorry, but that's what his that was his way of saying he was sorry by coming right. to his room. Right. Because um, he never did that. Ever did no. that before. That was no. way out of his character. Exactly. So a leader, yeah. a leader who cares, listens yeah. and knows about the people around them yeah. and and remembers and gets that um, because we are we're all the same, but we're also we're also all different. And, um, and I think, um, you know, if you want to, winning isn't, who said winning isn't, isn't, how did he say it? Winning isn't everything, but it, but it really is. Um, he, I, I think, I think Michael was, was, was committed to being the best he could be. And, and in that same light, he made others around him, you know, so much, so much better. Um, and, the devotion that he had to his parents, especially his father, you can see the emotion when his father wasn't there and how it impacted him. Yeah. So you saw his vulnerability as well. And I think people around him knew that and he was okay to do that. But I also think he he, he kind of wished he could be allowed to be more vulnerable too. And that's another sometimes hard thing a leader has to go through is to not fake it by a long shot, don't fake it. You want to be authentic and, and leadership is being vulnerable, but it's not easy sometimes when you're leading. And um, so I think he, he cared about his team. He cared about representing Chicago. You know, he cared about his parents. And I think, um, you know, that's what, that's what a, a leader does. And even if people, and he even said it, he kind of said it, like not everybody's going to love him. And, um, you, you know, you can't get everybody, all the people to love you all the time, right? Um, it's the truth. But you, and if it's but not if you, for you, it, and then he said, if it's if I'm not for you, then find somebody else that inspires you. Yeah, you know, right fit, right? It's, right. it's got to be the right fit. And uh, but the bottom line is, people, people um, recognize leaders that really do care about them. Um, you know, really, really, really do care about them because at the end of the day, the thing that fills our heart and soul the most is actually feeling like you belong and you're part of a community, whether that's a Chicago Bulls team or your family or your department in your company or your city or your country. Um, any, somebody that makes you feel like you belong, you know, is amazing, amazing leader. 
Well, you're amazing, Mark, and we're just thankful for your time today, for your thoughts today, and for all the great work and impact that you're making. You're constantly making the world a better place and making a great impact with your organization, Fifth Element Group. You can find them at Fifth. It's a 5thelement.group, Fifth Element dot group. Mark, thank you for all your impacts. Thank you for your friendship continued great work. And I look forward to having you back on to tell more stories like today that you've done with John Krasinski, Starbucks, um, uh, Pepsi, and with your Leaders Who Care uh, uh, series. We're so honored to have you today. Thanks again for the, all the impacts that you make. It's an omni impact for all of us. And uh, I want to thank you for everything you've done. We've known each other for a while now. And uh, I think I've recycled myself just based on everything you've done. <laughs> Um, so it's a, it's a, it's a super pleasure being with you and I, um, I appreciate the positive attitude and, uh, let's keep making a difference, man. Uh, you're, you're on. 